Hi, this is Anna and welcome to my channel BBO3AV. This is my 7th or 8th attempt to record this video today. I would like to talk about the books I have purchased in the months of November and December 2016. Books in the actual paper version. So no, nothing electronic, nothing audible. If you would like me to talk about the huge amount of books I have purchased online to read on my Kindle, please do let me know. Today I'm just though sticking to the physical copies I have. I have purchased more than I'm going to show you, but they haven't been here yet. Some I've purchased this week along, and I fully admit, I knew that when I was doing it, that there is just no chance that they're going to reach me until 2017. Because it's Christmas deliveries, everybody's working overtime, we have train strikes, we're going to have base, it's just, base strike is just the nature of this. So... There will be three sections. There will be books I have purchased which are secondhand. Some of them are really out of print by now. Some of them are modern books, but I have bought them secondhand because they're cheaper. And some of them are my literary magazines. So the happy reader and the slightly foxed. And I have to have to stay away that all of them are in English this time. I have purchased some books in Russian on the Russian uh, online retailer site. But they're not going to be here until January. Here we go. We have the current issue of the Happy Reader, which I have received on subscription. Two sections as usual. The first half is the interview with the British actress, Christine Scott Thomas. Here she is on the cover. She's both stage and film actress. You probably remember her as the woman who was in love with Hugh Grant's character in Four Weddings and a Funeral. The second half is to do with the book by Willa Cather of Pioneers, which I actually have purchased this year because it was all over the booktube. It's a really, really nice book. I have it in a beautiful Oxford University Press edition. I really, really would like to read it. And I think I will read the book before I read an essay about it because what I would like to ideally have is my own idea, my, my own views on the book without clouding it with someone else's. That's what I tend to do. I tend to try not to read too much about the book. I'd like to know what's happening in there, but not too, too much detail. Definitely nothing analytical before I actually form my own opinion. And then I managed to get my hands on the previous issue. This is issue number six. The interview is with Ethan Hawke. He's an actor, I believe he's an American actor. And the second half is quite fascinating because it has to do with a Swedish classic I have never heard of by, I'm going to butcher the name, Selma Logerlöf. Logerlöf? Selma Logerlöf. It's a book published in 1891 and it's called The Saga of Gosta. And it is published by the Penguin Classic Edition. But I have never heard of that book and I would really, really, really like to read it. Sounds fascinating. I've also received my own copy of the recent Slightly Fox magazine. This is issue number 52. And I have kept myself as far away from it as possible. I've only read two issues, two issues, two essays. And from one of them, I have purchased the books, which I'm going to show you in. And also I talked about Dr. Zhivaga, the book which I have read in the month of December. And I'm going to talk with it in the... Well, probably in January when I do my video about the books I've read and finished in December. Finished, because there might be some books which I will not finish. And then I have gotten those four secondhand issues on eBay. And even though they're secondhand, I think they look pretty decent. They're pretty good quality. I like them. And they are issue number 48. This is winter 2015. I have issue number 45, which is spring 2015. I love this cover. I have issue number 44, winter 2014. And issue number 41, spring 2014. And that concludes my entire collection of 2016, 15 and 14. I have some of the issues from 2013, 2012, 2011. As I've mentioned previously, I would like to collect all of them, but only if I can buy them reasonably priced. And my plan is to read, well, obviously, once I finish issue number 52, in the months of winter, so January, February this year, 
2017. I, I think in the school years. So in the school year, <laughs> in January and February, I would like to read the previous winter ones. So it will most likely be this one first, winter 2015. And then the spring comes around, I will pick up the spring issue and so on. While we are on the issue of Slightly Foxed, I have bought myself two books. One mentioned in issue number 51. Those are Slightly Fox Hardbound Cloth Editions. They're limited edition. They only ever published 2,000 books. And you can buy them new on the website. They do ship everywhere around the world. And they are absolutely stunning. So on the front, they have... I don't know if you can see, but they do have the logo. And it's just embedded. But on the side, they have gold lettering. And this is issue number, or number 27, called Marrying Out. And I've heard about this in Slightly Fox quarterly number 51, which I've read last month. Well, I've read really finished this month in December. I haven't talked to you about it yet. And this is about a Jewish family living in Eastern London in the middle of the 20th century. And I'm really fascinated. And I also managed to buy their most recent issue number 36 edition. And it still has it's new. It still has the flap. And this is set in the 1960s in a girls' grammar school. Uh, no, beg your pardon, not grammar school, British girls boarding school. I am a teacher. This is going to be really, really interesting for me to read. In fact, I think one of them I'm going to include in my TBR for Christmas. Because those books are really acclaimed. People who read them always say that they're really worth the time you spend. What else did I purchase? I have purchased two books using the influence of YouTube and those are quite pricey Chicago Press classics editions of this one is Euripides the first volume and also the first volume of Sophocles and the reason I purchased them is because Alicia really really raves about those particular editions. She was recommended to read them by her professor when she was doing her undergraduate degree. And if a professor thinks that this is a really good translation, then who am I to argue? I would like to read more of the classic literature because I feel there is a gap and that gap is affecting my understanding of Victorian literature and the modern literature is heavily influenced by the Victorian one. Those are translations and those are editions by David Green in Richmond Latimore. And there are, I think, 13 volumes altogether published by Chicago University Press. I have a go with those two. I have a feeling it will take me a very long time. But if I finish one volume, I'll do exactly what Alicia is doing. I will then purchase another one. Those are beautiful, really beautiful paper editions. This is the entire reprint of Virginia Woolf by the Vintage Classics in these beautiful paperback editions and I had to pre-order them on Amazon when I first heard that they're going to be released and I don't regret it. I do like Virginia Woolf and I do want to read more of Virginia Woolf. So I'm going to start with the one I have read. I've read Miss Dalloway this year. I absolutely loved it but I read it electronically and now I'm a proud owner of this gorgeous edition. Just have a look. It has French flaps, beautiful end papers. Just, I love those paper editions. I know they've done the Russian classics, but I'm not going to buy it, obviously, because I can read Russian classics in Russian. But I love the editions to do. The second one is The Waves, which I have read while sailing in Finland. I was sailing with a friend of mine, and he is a massive lover of Virginia Woolf's. He, he thinks she's just amazing. And we were reading chapter in turn to each other. Well, there were several of us, but we were reading all the chapter each on a sailing boat in the middle of nowhere. And in the summer, it was just wonderful. So I have really, really good memories of this book, and I would dearly love to reread it. 
I think the thickest out of them is the years, which I have never read, but I would love to. This is the one I really am keen because the same friend thinks that this book should be read by everyone. And I do want to read it. And it's called The Lighthouse. And it also has The Room of One's Own. And finally, last but not least, The Arlanda, which is a classic and I have never read it to my shame. But now that I have them all together, standing like this, I'll be more inclined to read at least one Virginia Woolf a year. Those four books which came in together, and I have to say, even though I love, I absolutely love how they look, I love the editions, I think the New York review books are wonderful in terms of editorial work. Their delivery from the United States starts at $56. This is ludicrous. But those are the books I have purchased. I've bought the special edition, 50th anniversary edition of Stoner. Absolutely beautiful. I've never read it, but it is a contemporary classic. I've also uh, bought the first for me of uh, Henry Green, that's Loving, and they are reissuing all of his work in the paperback. And I would like to collect them all from the New York Review. I can't why keep I, why am I keep forgetting that New York Review Books? I would like my Henry Green to come from them, all of them. And you can buy this one on Amazon. So I'm gonna buy the rest of them on Amazon. Magda Zaba the Door. This is the classics original, translated from Hungarian by Lendrix. And again. This is highly acclaimed novel, which I have never read. That's Magda Zabo. Isa's Ballad. I do apologize for this. I'm going crazy. On Goodreads, they are really, really highly recommended. So, I don't know. I don't know which one to start with. Which one do you recommend I start with? Because I think they both deal with quite difficult issues. So... Advice would be welcome. I'm a bit reticent. I don't know which one to pick up first. And that's the entire series of five novels. And I wanted them all in this new edition. And I bought them used on Amazon, but one of them came with the previous edition. So if I like them enough and I want to keep them, then I'll have to repurchase the second volume. This is books published in the 1990s all the way to 2000. But this set in the 20th period from 1940s till 1960s in, in England. And they deal with a complicated family, just one family. And they are quite big, all of them, but apparently they are a quick and fascinated read. So we'll see how well it goes. This is volume number one and it's called The Light Years by Jane Howard. This is the one which doesn't look like it belongs to it. It's the previous edition. And this is called Marking Time, volume number three, Confusion, volume number four, Casting Off, it's quite heavy, and then last but not least, All Change. And this looks like it's been in a very humid room because the bottom of it is starting to fatten. You know like the paper does when it's been moistened? That's how it looks. So I quite fancy picking up one of those books for my Christmas TBR just to have it a go, see if I like it. And as I mentioned, if I do, I will have to take this to the charity shop and get my hands on the new release because if I keep the books on the shelf, what I like is for the same author to be represented within the same edition. Otherwise, it's some, particularly if it's a series, if I can't get the entire author, but I can get just the series, I would like it to be published by the same, in the same edition, because otherwise it just stands out too much, freaks me out. Right, we're coming to a huge pile. It's the last pile. Everything in that pile, guys, will be, with well, exception of one book, second hand. Right, starting with a book I wanted to read for a while, and that's Middlesex, which is free Eugenius. Everyone keeps telling me how amazing it is. 
It is a second hand edition, but to be honest, I got it for 150. It's not bad. I also got Kazuka Ishigura in this Fabian Faber edition, and I want to collect all Kazuka Ishigura in that edition, and I'm reading this at the moment, hence I still have the bookmarks, and I absolutely enjoy it. I'm enjoying reading it. This is a slow novel, it's a very British novel, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's written really beautifully. And another book by the same author, I believe this is five short stories of music in Nightfall. So Nocturnes is his short story collection. I do have more secondhand books by him. I pretty much have his his entire collection published by Faber and Faber because again I like them to look the same when it's the next to each other. But even though I've been collecting him, I haven't actually read him until this year, which is such a shame. But I'm rectifying it. This is the book mentioned in the previous Slightly Fox edition I have read, which really tickled my fancy. This is published in the Oxford University Press, beautiful edition, and this is Mary Wolfencraft Letters, written in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. This is her journal, so it's completely autobiographical. This is about her travels in the above countries with a small child, because she was completely fed up her life and she ended up trying to help her lover currently you would say he was her partner but back then he was her lover they were not legally married and he cast her away for someone else and she found it very difficult to deal with she decided to help his business and travel to Norway and Sweden and Denmark to look into the business and it's a beautiful account of her experience in this country back in the 18th century for a woman to travel by herself in the 18th century, that was quite unprecedented. But, as we know, Mary Wolfencraft was the mother of Mary Shelley. And she was also the woman who have talked quite a lot about human rights and human independence. And what I have done is I've purchased this. This is second hand. I bought it in a second hand shop. I quite like this book, but it does have some marking. And unfortunately, not just in in the pencil. Like if I have to mark the book, I would do it in the pencil. Those person was doing it in pen, and this is like the mild copy of this. Some of them are just green pen everywhere, which is a bit upsetting. And this is Mary and Maria. So I would like to read this. This book brings together three extraordinary novels by an extraordinary pair. Mary Wollstonecraft, a radical feminist and author of Vindication of the Rights of Women. I have not read it yet. I know I should, but I haven't yet. And Mary Shelley, her daughter, author of Frankenstein. I love the Frankenstein, so I'm pretty sure I will enjoy this. So, again, something to read hopefully soon. I then came across this book. This is Ofram Pamuk, The Museum of Innocence, a really thick novel set in Istanbul, Turkey. I have never read anything Turkish by a Turkish author. I just, even by Arabic author, really, really, really few works. And this is a story. I'm going to read you what it says. It is, it is a perfect spring day in Istanbul. Kemal, a wealthy heir, is about to become engaged to the aristocratic Sibyl when he encounters his Fusun. A beautiful shop girl. He falls in love and finds his established world of westernized families, opulent parties, society gossip, and dining room rituals is shattered. As you know, Turkey is quite a secular society, but they do have their own share of problems due to religion conflict with the secular society and how they're trying to balance the two in the 21st century. This to me sounds fascinating. I have not started this. I believe this is set in the 20th century, just judging by the cover. Never heard anything about this book, and I deliberately restrained myself from looking up this book on the Goodreads. Because again, very often they give you spoilers. And then I have collected several books by Gerald Durrell. He was a naturalist, so he was written quite a lot of books on nature. I got the Beef with Beagles, which I have seen on Instagram, and people said it's really good, people whose opinion I really value. And all of those are really old vintage books, so I bought them for like 
50p to one pound and used shops uh, this is my family and other animals I think this is his most well-known work this is the drunken forest and finally I have the overloaded arc I have not read any of them and I quite like them the person who does like him is David Attenborough and I absolutely adore David Attenborough his opinion is really valid to me so yeah I love the old vintage editions They're just Penguin edition, sorry, they're just so pretty. Right, and the last pile. Oh, it's crumbling everywhere around me. All of those are John Buchan, Witchwood. He's out of print, so I managed to find really, really old editions on eBay for decent money. And those books are very highly recommended in one of the essays and it's slightly foxed. I'm trying to find whether it was published because it looks pretty old but it's missing one page hmm. it's a shame it doesn't tell you when it was published but it is really 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 old then I have Nigel Balchin my own executioner Colin to James Place London this was again by the recommendation slightly foxed. Even the price is the old one in the old English system of shillings and pennies. This is published in 1945 and I believe again this is out of print but you can find quite a few of them. This is John Buchan, the Marquis of Montrose. Beautiful, really old. I still, I still have a receipt and everything. Let me see when that was published. It has dedication to someone. It even has, guys, one of those tissue papers, rice papers, to preserve the portrait. The Marquis of Montrose himself. And this is 1913 edition. And believe it or not, I bought it for less than £40. So it's a good deal. So every time there is a picture in the book, it will be protected. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful book. Nigel Balchin, The Darkness Falls from the Air. And finally, The Last of England by Ted Walker. And this used to be a library book, but I bought it on eBay again for pretty decent value. So I have no idea what this book is about. And I can't even remember why I purchased it in November, but it was on recommendation from the Slightly Fox magazine. So quite a lot of really old books. And... Finally, the last three books I have purchased and they all by the Notting Hill editions. The first one is William Hazelwood Essay Prize in 2013. They have a essay prize, short story prize every single year. This is 2013 edition. Just the winner's work. Quite curious. This is Worlds on Fire. Selected essays by Hart Hum. And the last but not least, this is the very last book, is by John Berger, The Cataract. And this one has really interesting drawings. By the author. So one of them again, I'm going to pick up to read over the Christmas period. So those were all the purchase, purchases I have made in the last two months, November, December 2016. And I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you. Bye.